Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first commander's call for 2013. Uh, we have uh, several presentations today, a few awards to hand out, um, as well as a uh, CAC meeting taking place today. Uh, to start off, if I could have uh, Captain Worcester, uh, please come up and do a safety brief. Two things I want to talk about for a safety brief. The first one is the incoming weather. And just remember that uh, driving on ice is not a pleasant experience for most of us. Um, for, but let's take it a little step farther. Make sure that you are dressed and equipped to be stuck outside. If you have an accident, we hope not, but if you do, or if your vehicle breaks down in inclement weather like that, make sure that you're dressed for that weather. Uh, I always say if I'm going to fly, I always like to be dressed for what the weather is for the next 24 hours. It may be bright and sunny. Uh, when we leave, um, but when we wind up spending some place that we hadn't planned on, uh, that weather may turn frigid, and you need to be able to survive in that environment. So please prepare yourself for the weather for the next 24 hours whenever you travel. A blanket in your automobile, some salt or sand is always a good thing to have with you along with your normal supplies. The second thing I want to touch on is uh, cell phone operation and texting in corporate vehicles or in your own vehicle, but it is prohibited by regulation to text or use a handheld cell phone device while you're operating a corporate vehicle. Um, we all know the statistics, we hear it time and time again, and yet we find, particularly in the young people, that they're texting. Um, I just did one of those ad hoc studies and as I'm driving down the road, I counted the number of people I saw, and it was about 75% of the people that passed me were on a phone or were texting while they were traveling. And that was just on the way here. Uh, that, that's not a safe thing. Um, people that are texting and driving are as likely, if not more likely, than somebody who is legally intoxicated to have a traffic accident. And we don't want you to be hurt. So those are my topics for the day. Everybody gets credit for a safety briefing for, uh, for today. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Captain. Um, <clears throat> at this point, we're going to roll into some awards presentations. 
Um, first up, can I have uh, Cadet uh, Chief Master Sergeant Caleb Couture come forward uh, for a moment, please? I don't know how many of you got the opportunity to see uh, Cadet Couture's video, um, but he had did an outstanding job. Um, and on behalf of uh, Little Wayne, we're presenting him with the commander's coin. Is the camera? Oh, wait, we got the video. We got the video camera. Oh. <laughs> I sanitized my hands, so we're good. <laughs> you did a very nice job. Like I said, he did an outstanding job yes. of that video. You know, I, I, I asked him to take the challenge, give me some photos, give me a, a short uh, speech of, or of what you did, and he delivered um, and he did an outstanding job. And I, let me tell you that the recruiter that was there was absolutely impressed with the uh, young men and women um, from that unit. Uh, you know, he, he praises you guys every time I talk to him. So uh, thank you again for your outstanding job putting that together and been doing that video for us. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Larry Cuban, please come forward. <coughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Larry, Larry has been around almost as long as CAP. Almost, um, and he's actually, you know, he's actually only 25. But um, come on. <laughs> Larry has uh, done an outstanding job over the years of documenting things for our history for the wing. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to recognize Larry um, for those things that he has done. Um, Larry is going to be leaving us as wing staff and going, going to pull back and focus on the group and, and squadron and take care of. And, those things but he's still working on a project to get us that history from the past 50 years uh, so you know he's going to still continue to deliver great things and uh, you know I'm looking forward to seeing some of that history uh, you know so Larry thank you for all your hard work and being presented with the point and uh, at this time you know we'll, we do have a certificate coming to him for a later time that we're going to present at uh, his unit so thank you So we have the Cadet Quality Unit Award. Um, this was presented to uh, several units who met the challenge of different things that are different criteria that set forth by national headquarters for uh, basically an outstanding cadet unit. Um, I'm gonna bring you all up at the same time. If, you, if I could have the commanders or representative from um, Fort Leonard Wood, Colonel Travis Hoover, Platte Valley, Springfield Regional Composite Squadron and St. Charles Composite Squadron. A lot of work. Um, there's, you know, all the achievements that the cadets go through. This is one of those documentations for that. So, you know, this this shows that a lot of our squadrons are actually really coming together, getting involved, and I like that the number keeps growing every year. So, congratulations and thank you for all that you do. Um, I don't know if she's here. Is uh, Lana Fletcher here? Anybody from Branson here? Mm -hmm. All right. If I could have uh, commander or representative from. Uh, Branson come up and receive the Grover Learning Certificate to be presented to Lana. This one's for one of our own wing staff. Um, not here today, and, and you know it's kind of hard to present to the commander since you are the commander. I am. So, uh, but we're going to give it to yeah. Captain Kendrick. Yeah, we're going to give. We're going to pass this on to Springfield to uh, to pass on to her, please. 
Uh, this is the 2012 Major Howell Balsam CAP Public Affairs Award of Excellence for the newsletter category. Uh, this is for the Missouri Wing Cadet Programs newsletter. Uh, for, uh, Lieutenant Thank Colonel you. Julie Oldham. Thank you for taking that for well. All right. Well, these next ones, if these individuals are here, if I could come forward. If they're not here, commanders will give you these certificates after. Um, these were presented at Wing Conference. However, if you remember, we did not have our printer working properly. So we finally have the certificates. So if they're here, please come forward. Otherwise, commanders, you don't have to come except for them. Just after the meeting, please pick yep. them up. <laughs> uh, Dan Gerbus, Adam Dabak, David Abishan, Jack Gray, Heather Holmes, uh, Kylan Campbell, Jeremiah Gathright, Brian Shepard, Edward Gathright, uh, Hunter Shepard, Jonah Beatles, Brenda Beatles, Steve Abishan, Charlene O'Neill, and Mark Miller. These are all awards for the encampment, I believe. <coughs> yeah, I'll let you take hers. That's hers. I gotta see who all we got, so. <laughs> These are uh, commander's accommodations. Not any particular order. Hunter. Hunter. There was a camera. Congratulations. You know, I got a gap right here. There's two of them. Jeremiah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to move again. <laughs> Please come see me afterwards for your citation. Special guest here this uh, this morning um, from the Missouri Veterans History Project. Um, we have uh, Jerica Holt. Uh, she's going to give you a little short presentation on this project. Um, basically, um, we're asking for your support. This would be an outstanding opportunity for you to, to give back to your community and uh, be a great project for your your squadrons to uh, help uh, support. So. Please uh, give her your attention, and uh, she'll be available after this for questions as well. Thank you, Jerrica. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm going to give you a heads up. This is the first time I've ever presented for the Missouri Veterans History Project. Kind of a greenhorn, so bear with me if it gets a little rough. I don't think it should be, because I'm generally a fairly good talker, but we shall see. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm from Buffalo, Missouri, which is in the Springfield area. I am a senior at Mizzou, and I got in with the Missouri Veterans History Project for my kind of senior internship slash capstone project to help kind of streamline the process and make it a little bit more available to communities throughout the state so they can start up their own volunteer organizations. Um, kind of a brief intro for the Missouri Veterans History Project. Um, earlier in the years, we had a less organized program um, that was set through a private contractor, but it was cut through the state budget and kind of left hanging. But the federal government requires each state to have <coughs> an organization set up to be able to do this Veterans History Project. So in 2010, um, what we have now kind of manifested as a not-for-profit corporation, and its goal basically is just to train and find volunteers to interview veterans. The whole goal of the History Project is to 
um, get veterans personal accounts of their lives, most particularly their time in service, but just the entire life of the veteran, um, to get kind of an organic history uh, available through the Library of Congress and through the State Historical Society. And um, with the Missouri Veterans History Project, we also really uh, focus on being able to make a DVD uh, of, the, of the interview available for the veteran and their family, um, and then for the State Historical <coughs> Society and the Library of Congress. Um, it's you know a wonderful idea, and it seems simple enough, but there has to be a lot of clockwork behind it. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, it's volunteer driven. We have a 13 member board of directors, and we have representation from Let's see, different organizations throughout the state, like the University of Missouri, the State Historical Society of Missouri, the Missouri Veterans Commission, Honor Flight, the Truman's Veterans Hospital, um, and then other places. The kind of the benefits of doing this, obviously, is to honor our veterans and get that firsthand account. Right now, uh, we've got a pretty big push to interview World War II veterans, so we can get those histories logged and available. Um, and then also, this is such a great resource for researchers, both on the national and state level, because the basic setup is you'll have a videographer and an interviewer and the veteran. That's like the baseline that you need. Um, so the, the, inter or the interview would take place with the veteran. And one of the most important things uh, is someone would sit down and log with proper nouns and times like during the during the interview, so you would know, oh, you were in this particular place at this particular time, there are only 500 people there, this might be the only account we can have access to. So it is such a wonderful resource and, um, you know, honors living history and then helps integrate it into whatever projects might come from it. Um, let's see, just a couple of, I guess, numbers for what we've accomplished in the last two years, we've had approximately 500 interviews um, taking place and most of the activity has been in the St. Louis and Columbia areas but we're working as I said on branching out that's kind of why they, they got me in here um, and I think we're starting up no I know we are sorry about that <laughs> we are starting up a chapter in Troy Missouri which is kind of northern St. Louis area um, and they have wonderful support and I'm really excited to get things started up there um, kind of the way we get the startup is we first need a volunteer coordinator uh, at the local level to be interested and be able to find whatever context they, they might be able to for uh, volunteers and interviewers. Um, and then we would set up a <coughs> training session with that area so everyone would be well acquainted with what they're doing. And it's not just like, oh, I'll throw you into the swimming pool, see if you can swim. Good luck. No. <laughs> We're here to help. We really want this to thrive within the state um, and hopefully we can kind of set precedence for the rest of the nation. Um, once individuals are trained, uh, the Missouri Veterans History Project can assist in publicizing their organization to local veterans groups and organizations, and we can help establish interview days, uh, because generally it's a lot easier to do a handful of interviews in one day than just one here, one there. Um, we can help assist with camera operations, logging, as I said, that would be kind of the index with the proper nouns and then post-interview production for the DVDs and stuff. Uh, and provide copies, we'll, we'll provide copies of the DVDs to the State Historical Society, and then the State Historical Society you know, logs it um, within their system and then also passes it on to the Library of Congress. Um, we do have a website with more information. I pass that on to Brad, and I'm also going to send like electronic copies of the brochures. So we'll be able to make sure you have access to that. And then, again, whenever I'm done, um, I think we'll have some time. So if you have any questions or anything, you can feel free to ask me. Um, it's mvhp.org. That's our website if you have any burning questions to find out more information. Um, if any of you would have any ideas within your own areas of people who might be interested, or you yourself are, or even um, local businesses that might help support um, because one of, one of the, actually the biggest challenges is just finding like a quiet room to be able to do a professional interview and you know, give people the respect that they deserve. Uh, so all of these things, and I can provide a better list for you of, of some of the things you could do to help if you're interested at all. Um, okay. And I basically went over the general benefits, but it just, 
kind of sings to my heart because like during the interview, it's all about honoring the veteran and realizing the living history because I don't know if any of you are familiar with oral history, but it's got a huge, a huge like research into it and it's a, a really powerful thing in my opinion, having, having a spoken word and having that personal account. And if at any point, you know, say a veteran gets a fact incorrect while they're doing the interview, well, one of the things within the Missouri Veterans History Project is like never correct them. This is their story, this is their experience, this is their reality. This is part of their history and ours and to see how that affected um, life whenever they experienced it and then how it impacts life now and into the future. Um, so that's ba my basic rundown. Uh, as I said, if you have any questions or want to talk to me more or any ideas, feel free to get a hold of me, but that's all I've got. Thank you. <laughs> too far? Oh. Well, back up your um, just uh, yeah, as, a, as a token of thank you, um, presenting yeah. the coin. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to shake your hand, but I've been sitting over there again. We can. I've been doing oh, it here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been doing. Thank you. I also want to say, you know, uh, most of you who have known me growing up know that history is, was my major in, in college. and So history means a lot to me, and especially I don't know if any of you have had the chance to sit down with a veteran in your family, whether it was a parent or a grandparent or you know anything like that, who uh, aunt or uncle or anybody and heard their story. Um, but it's always very moving, and I think it's very important to capture that information and and to have that for posterity. Uh, it it helps grow our understanding of what it was like at that time, how it affected them later. Um, but it gives us a much better picture of the overall event because historians can tell you, they can write the books, and they can put it very factual, <coughs> but it's the actual words from the individuals there that give you the emotion of the moment, that can really tell you what it felt like and just what it was like to be there. That sometimes a historian who sits there reading a book and reading the official documents from that time period that went through making the orders and telling people what to do in battle, can't do. So I, I highly encourage you that if you know people who you know, have an important history uh, to share it. I know the Fullers have, have told me about how, is it Mary? My yeah, dad. Mary's dad, um, um, yeah, the Batan Death March. He was a survivor of that. She didn't even know until after he passed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he after he passed, she didn't even know. And if you've never heard about that story, I mean, that's, that's a huge you know, historical event that her family was a part of. Uh, so, you know, please, uh, keep this in mind. And definitely, if you know a veteran who, you know, <coughs> try to encourage them to participate. And, and, you know, if you would like to help set up, um, help set up a, a local event where you can get people together to, to share that, we, we definitely like to get that out there. So, that's... Part of the reason that we wanted to share this today because that's, that's a big thing for me is making sure that we record that history and we record that knowledge and those experiences. All right, just uh, more on that, um, we're going to be assigning a special project officer um, for this. Um, I think it's a great, it's a great project and uh, you know, basically that'll be give us our opportunity, that'll be our point of contact to reach back to this organization and help with those events. I mean, even if, if even if all your unit does is facilitate a location um, to, to host these events, and maybe even you know, if, like she said, you're setting up multiple interviews. Even if you're setting up the facility and, and setting up opportunities for like you know, just you know, punching cookies for the the veterans and just to sit and talk with them, you know, while they're waiting for interviews, whatever that might be. Um, this is a great opportunity of, of how civil air can get involved. Um, and it also gives, uh, especially for the cadets, gives you an opportunity just to see your heritage. Uh, so once again, you know, we encourage you to get involved with that and one more details uh, to come on that.